It's time now for the Casey Ingram Show on WSTU. The opinions expressed are those of the program host and guest and not necessarily those of WSTU. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. It's time to call in with your questions and comments at 220-9788, 220-WSTU. And now, here's Casey Ingram. Welcome to those of you that are tuning in. As you know, I just uh, had an hour with school board uh, member and incumbent Marsha Powers. Not my normal time frame, and now we are on our normal time frame, and you're noticing that there's a fantastic video live stream feed on Facebook. And I, I want to say I used to provide this as, as part of my show, but I no longer do that. So it's up to the candidates if they want to bring in impactful media. And Sean Reed, you've done that. And I'm glad you you did because you look fabulous on camera. I'll tell you, I, I can see it here. So um, it's, it's fantastic. So that's why there is a difference. And this is because of Sean. I also want to thank Indian Town Marine Center and Indian Town Marina, uh, mo- both my sponsors. It's hurricane season, folks. I want to mention them both that you want to make sure to give them a call to have safe harborage for your boats because uh, once a hurricane is named, likely you are not going to find a safe place to keep it in town. So peace of mind, get your reservation out there today. So in the studio, I'm I'm very excited. Again, uh, because of Mark Breckville offering me his hour, we're able to come back and spend in-depth time with each of the candidates. And Sean, this is your second visit here to the show. I I love having you back. We're going to spend all hour together. There's a lot of topics to cover. When you first came in to the studio, you <laughs> just were starting to run. So um, let's just talk about that a little bit, Sean, because I, I think that um, I've seen your energy just ramp up and your dedication. You seem to get more fire every day. I do. So when I first came on the show, I, I kind of struggled with my identity on how much do you put out to the public? Do you stay reserved? Do you just give them everything? And I think it depended on how the delivery was in my research because everything's available pretty much publicly. Yes. Um, So with all the research that I do do, I turn it around with the videos that I have put out on the Facebook page for the campaign and they've been garnering a lot of attention. Um, They're done factual. Um, whether it's through public meetings, court records, um, just research, 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 research. And FOIA request is a big thing for me. And uh, yes, I've, I've gained the confidence in what I'm doing um, between door knocking and stuff too. I started that in January. So it's coming from the constituents on my door knocking, basically all the feedback. Um, you get tips on you know roads to go down and things to look up. And you just confirm it, basically, whether it's with city staff or the community or some somebody that had done a little bit of research before me or heard something pop up. And I basically go down a rabbit hole and try to gather everything together and put it out into content, basically. What are you hearing from residents as you're out there knocking on doors? I, I think that's the, the best temperature gauge of a political race is how many people you're connecting with and what is your feedback from them? Um, So when I'm on a good week, I do two to 300 houses. Um, The feedback is obviously the overdevelopment. That's the overdevelopment and the traffic. Those have been probably the two biggest things. And yes, you can get into specific projects like Costco, Brightline, the Drug Rehab Center. Those have been controversial as well. And there's pros and cons to all of it involved. And I think just weighing the options. But those have been very hard hit for the community, I would say, on their concerns. And we're going to talk about some of those today. Again, folks, I'll look for your questions and feedback through the Facebook live feed. I can't take live phone calls, but I'm definitely watching the the, uh, Facebook feed. Uh, Sean, we just attended a candidate forum that was put on uh, by a group, a citizen group, We Care Martin. And uh, you were there the other night, and none of the incumbents actually attended that. So I, I know a lot of the attendees were super disappointed with that. But what was your perspective of being a part of that forum? Um, so that was actually the first forum that not only I really attended in, in thought, but I was also a part of it. So I saw the best of both sides, and to me it was very well put on. For some forms that I have seen, it was actually a packed room. There was probably a couple hundred 150 people, people mm-hmm. I would say, if I had to guess, that mm-hmm. were there. And I would say at least 80% of people were there from start to finish, which I don't know if that's typical, um, but it was very well moderated. 
Well, thank um, you. <laughs> there were things that, you know, I appreciated hearing. Um, I'm very harsh on myself when it comes to my ability. And the feedback that I received personally was very welcomed from the constituents. And they loved what I had to say. And it was my answers were straight to the point. Um, I didn't use analogies. I didn't fluff up an answer. It was this is what it is, but you also have to have a solution too. And I tried to throw solutions out to the problems that we do see. It was an interesting forum for me. I'll just say this real briefly because it was residents. Uh, you didn't have any business entity behind it. Uh, it was just residents out there asking questions and wanting to hear feedback from candidates and, and those that were elected. So most of the questions that I read were questions that were submitted by who you're going to work for. So it, it was a, a fascinating um, forum that way. You know, it's a it different was. perspective. Um, it was exciting. I would have answered the Martin County questions too, by the way. Sean did tell me that. He <laughs> said, I wanted to answer the county questions as well. I can. So, but let's talk a little bit more here. I've, I've got a lot of topics I want to cover yeah. here over the hour. Uh, number one that uh, comes up all the time right now, because it's a lot of money is the Bright Line Station. Yeah. What is the status? What is your opinion? Should the city of Stewart agree to have help fund part of that station? Should they, are, what about the grants? Let's talk about it all. Yeah, so there, there's a lot. I'm going to try to remember everything um, that I've researched. So when it comes to Brightline, it, it's an effort between the city and the county, right? The county's donating land to the city. They're working on that. The biggest thing is the cost, though. There's no definite answer. I believe they've used other stations. I think the city of Boca Raton in particular, um, and that's where I did a FOIA request at the city of Boca. And the city of Boca, from what I was received from them, was they only paid for the parking garage. That was it. And I want to say it came in at eleven and a half million dollars, and I think they had a million and a half dollar grant, so the city was only on the hook f for the leftovers. Um, I don't know if the rest came from a federal grant or if Brightline paid for it themselves. They didn't have that information, which I thought was weird on the FOIA request. Mm -hmm. And I did reach out as a follow-up, and they had no more information for me. Interesting. So I wasn't able to get there. Um, as far as funding it in the city of Stewart, well, the city of Stewart has no grants. They're hoping, um, and they're going off of what ifs. They want to lay the money out and then hopefully get reimbursed, which I think is a difficult decision as a business owner to lay money out and hope you get a return on your investment. So for me, that's, that's one of the biggest things is the cost of it. I think that concerns everybody and you're reaching into everybody's pocket to pay for it. Is it gonna benefit everybody? I mean, it's debatable, the location, it's on a D-rated dot road. Do we need a parking garage? That's always been a question as well in the city of Stewart. Um, so those things, it's, it's very concerning. And Brightline also increased their prices 251% in May of this year. They have. That Only in July. It upset a lot of the, the commuters that they were getting. So Yeah, so it's expensive. It's, it's not really affordable. Yeah, it might be convenient, but... And do you know how many stops uh, they are planning to have in Stewart? As far as I know, one. One, like yeah. one on the way to Orlando, one on the oh, way back. Oh, you're talking how during the day. Like that they're not. I don't, I don't think they're stopping I don't think sixteen actually times. Presented it. it I, I highly doubt it'd be sixteen yeah. times. I'd like to think not. Yeah, but I don't. We, I don't think it is. I we don't know. I guess it depends on if it actually took off or not. So if w the city of Stewart does not get a grant, the residents are going to have to pick up the tab. And have you looked at the budget to see where that might come from? I mean, unless you're increasing millage or something, I mean, I think property values have already increased enough. Now we're in like a, a chill period with property values. It's actually, I would say it's more on the decline than even stabilizing. We're speaking with Sean Reed. He's running for Group 4 City of Stewart Commission against incumbent Troy McDonald. If you want to look uh, some more information about Sean, readforstuart.com, R-E-E-D, his last name, read, F-O-R, Stuart.com. Do we need a, a parking garage? I mean, I'm, I'm born in the city. I, I work in the city. I personally don't have issues sometimes finding parking. Sometimes it can be an issue. If you want to park right in front of Black Marlin and walk right into the front door, that's going to be difficult, especially on a Friday or a Saturday night during peak hours. 
Um, and I think that's where it does hurt the locals by having that. And that's where we have more tourists and you're always going to have that, right? They're, they'll, they'll park a quarter mile away, a half mile away just to walk downtown. My 85 year old grandmother though is not going to come to downtown Stewart to go to the Black Marlin unless I'm with her because she's not going to park. Absolutely not. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more here. We're going to go into some other issues, and I want to let everybody know that uh, Troy McDonald will be on the show July 31st, so we'll hear from him as well. We want to make sure we have equal uh, airtime and opportunity for the candidates. Sean, something that you recently are starting to promote in promote is some water issues that I yes. think are surprising to people. Um, so let's talk about, first of all, your stance about water issues, and I know you have a video that you wanted to share with us as well. I do. Is uh, the video? We, we can cue it up, number one video, and that, that would be uh, Commissioner McDonald when he's on the dais speaking about okay. the... Yeah, okay, I'll, t I'll talk about it then. So um, basically, the city of Stewart last January, there was something that came up for vote to use um, pesticides and chemicals in the ponds to treat for weed control. Um, okay. So that came up for a vote. There was four out of five commissioners that voted yes on it. I looked at the warning label and you know when you start seeing skulls and a fish and there's you know it's red around it to me that's no good especially for a warning label they're giving you the information you just have to find it and read it um, so on that warning label it talks about long-lasting side effects on fish it tells you it's harmful if swallowed toxic if inhaled and these are in our ponds and if you're on facebook live feed i think we'll put that up so people can see that label themselves while yeah, you're talking. And, and these like i said they're in our ponds i know on the dais when they were actually speaking about it they say that there's rc boaters that actually use the pond on central parkway so they're exposed to it and they're using it for recreational activities and I thought it was very weird to basically save a buck versus manually removing the weeds versus spraying chemicals. Um, last Monday, the city had a presentation on it, and I wish more commissioners might have um, pushed the agenda more because the expert was saying if we planted more, um, I believe it was like seagrass and stuff that was natural, it would be more of a filtration for the ponds. And that was something that they presented to the commission, but it kind of fell on deaf ears in my opinion and I feel that could work better instead of just putting chemicals in the ponds to treat it. I feel like that's the easy way. So that's really something that caught your mind. And again, this is all the, the ponds that are around the city of Stewart. That's how they're treating the weeds. Um, your opponent made a comment about this chemical, and we'll go ahead and play that now real quick. Uh, there's no, you know, there's no science, there's no, you know, there's no scientific evidence that the uh, spraying is harmful. They always had while we sprayed, we had fish, we had other issues, and we've got. So he, he was on the dais saying that there was no scientific evidence that it's harmful for spraying, which it's mind boggling to me. Yes, there's fish in the pond, but the warning label says there's long lasting side effects on fish. So who do you believe? Do you believe the elected official or do you believe the person that created the MSD sheet for the product being used? I'd rather go with the warning label if I had to pick and choose which one to follow for evidence. Um, I could compare it to our river. I don't know many people that really fish and eat things out of the river anymore. Um, Sadly, yes. Yeah, I've seen sores on snook, right? But guess what? There's fish in the river. There's snook there. Do you really want to eat it, though? So is it safe just because there is something there? I had a comment on my Facebook page, something about the chemicals actually killed the ducks. Someone made a comment mm. on Facebook about that. So I would say, yeah, it's harmful to the environment. It's detrimental to our health. And it's like, how do you make that determination as an elected official to make that decision? And it was astonishing that it was four out of five commissioners that just said yes on it. What made you look into the chemical a little bit more and question whether or not it's safe? Um, well, I was raised to question everything. That's what my mom made me do. And uh, if something you know might smell and it doesn't look familiar or safe or just anything you want to question it and do your own due diligence and then you come up with your own conclusion and i think i did pretty good research on it and uh, i was able to make it into a, a entertaining video i guess so people would you know see the side that i'm trying to portray that there is um 
an alternative, right? There are people that can look into issues on a local municipality level. So we're looking out for the community, right? Right. To me, that's the biggest thing is question and ask more questions and dig into it. That's the biggest thing for me is research. So you can go to your Facebook page, which is uh, Sean Reed. Uh, so the Facebook, it's actually facebook.com forward slash Read for Stewart. Read for Stewart. And you'll see that video there, folks. And he has a chemical suit on. You'll certainly see him out there paddling in the, the pond. So um, you, you're you alluding to this already, but I wanted a little I deeper dive. I about water quality, too. There's another water quality thing. So Please go ahead. I, um, like I said, I like doing research. My opponent, I, I don't throw people under the bus when I talk about things. I like to research, like I said. So in 2011, um, Commissioner McDonald voted yes on the whole septic to sewer conversion. And this was pushed onto residents. And like I said, I do my research. So in 2013, Commissioner McDonald signed up for the program himself. It was 0% interest, I believe, for 10 years. In 2023 is when he finally completed his own septic to sewer conversion on his own dwelling that he had lived in in the city of Stewart, homesteaded. And it was one month before he sold his house and moved. If you're for water quality, it's not just the river. And to me, for somebody that pushes the whole, we've done the septic to sewer, we're a part of low sum, I've done all this stuff. Well, you took 10 years plus personally to do your own septic to sewer conversion within the city limits for something that you voted on as an elected official. So for me, you know, practice what you preach, I guess you could say. Um, I think that something should be enforced more. If you vote something on your constituents, you should do it yourself and follow it. I just want to be clear because I'm not completely understanding that 10 years. Was that just a payment schedule over 10 years? That was a payment schedule. I believe it was 6000 or so. I'd have to look. I didn't bring the paperwork with me or anything. But, yeah, it was a 10-year, I believe, interest-free with the city of Stewart. So you could sign up for it but not actually complete it. But, like I said, for me, the program's there. You voted on it. I mean, you let it go on for 10 years, basically, of just paying it interest-free instead of just getting it done like everybody else had to. So if your septic system failed, you couldn't fix it. You had no choice but to sign up for the septic to sewer conversion within the city limits, by the way. Was the 10 years available to everybody? I believe it was. I don't know if they're still doing the 10 years, but I know we're at a high conversion rate for people. But like I said, the biggest thing for me is, is do right. it, especially right. if you voted on it. That's, that's huge to me. Accountability. So you kind of have um, alluded to it already, but I really want to know what kind of commissioner are you going to be, Sean Reed, if you're elected? And that is um, so many times county, city, both entities, they just take staff's recommendation and oftentimes they don't really look at what they're voting on. So now staff has been there a long yes. time. They're the, they're the one consistent. So uh, clearly they're going to bring a lot of information that, to the table. That being said, what kind of commissioner are you going to be when topics are brought up? There's going to be agenda every meeting. Are you going to look at those each item or just kind of take staff's suggestion? You should. So um, I'll get into a lot of detail on it and, and my recommendation to Martin County commissioners as well, by the way. So when it comes to staff at the city level, um, the development director is amazing. The building official is great. The planners are great. Things have actually changed at a city level. Um, with the new employees that are there. They look into things a lot more, but that still doesn't mean you just take staff recommendations. So there's typically three PDF documents that we have to look at in a city level, and that's my main focus. I want to be able to research every agenda item in detail. Make sure it abides by everything. Does it benefit the community? Is it within reason? Um, I have personally been down there with my own projects, and staff has been wrong. They've been wrong on zoning before because the color of their monitor was off. <sighs> and, and I pointed it out before on, an, on a property that I had bought for our new preschool. They, were, they were wrong on the zoning for that, by the way. And, um, Very it was important in my to favor. know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was in my favor doing it. Um, but yes, you have to do your own research because you as an elected official, that's why you're up there. You're not up there. If, if you took staff recommendations, why'd you take the position? That's my number one thing. Um, 
I don't think, you know, you're not supposed to just agree with all commissioners all the time. You're supposed to bring an issue up. And those five individuals that we are, that we combine, are supposed to have, um, they're supposed to be sharp, right? And if there's a problem, all of us come up with a solution. You bounce stuff back and forth. It basically gets your brain firing and, and we can solve it. So, yes, I believe that's how that should work. Um, as far as a city level versus county, the issue, my biggest thing when it comes to county is those agenda item packets are too big, and most of those people probably don't even view it. And this is more of a county issue than a city level issue as far as staff recommendations. The county, I think, relies on staff recommendations way too much and way too often because you can have one project be 1,500 pages. Who's viewing that? That's, that's absolutely not many right. people. So my recommendation for the county level was to limit agenda items. If I was an elected official in the county, limit agenda items. Simple as that. You have more time to research. You can slow the pace down and do your own due diligence and not just have a bunch of employees on hand that might miss things because we're human. I miss things myself. So yes. Two part question, but interrelated. Why are you running for office and what will you bring to the commission that you currently think? believe is missing um, okay so the first part is why am I running so since getting involved I've realized I've learned a lot I've seen a lot of flaws here and there where we have current elected officials that there's issues that have been going on and they've existed but they haven't been solved um, for example the drug rehab center that was a flaw in our land development code a big flaw and Martin County, it would never have happened. And we've had commissioners, there's three of them that have sat up there for, I don't know, 20 plus years combined. And this is not the first you know, issue per se. Um, I would say um, some of the spending astonishes me. I know the millage rate in the city, yes, they've done great on that, which is amazing for us to stay around five for as long as we have, unlike the county. The city doesn't have as much out of control spending, I would say it's more looking into things in detail and questioning it, um, if it makes sense or not. Um, so I don't know if that fully answered the question. Yeah, I'm just it's, it's up to you what you want to you know what what is it you're going to bring to that commission that's um, missing. I would say someone that's an independent thinker, um, that's pretty sharp. I run a tight budget, um, not only at our preschools with my family. Um, if they were on the show with me, they would tell you, um, don't buy that unless you absolutely need it. Because we all want things. I want everything. My back hurts and I want a million dollars right now. But you, you have to function and run it very conservative and tight, especially if there's a lot of unknowns. Do we have to do, for example, the streetscape in downtown? I mean... Is it necessary? Is it going to bring more foot traffic? Sure, aesthetically it looks nice, but at what cost? How much improvement do we actually do? You know. And Sean, just real briefly, real briefly, mm -hmm. what is your experience? What is your background in the area? And you're a small business owner. You just mentioned with the the, the preschool centers. So, just for folks that don't know, we all yeah. assume we know who you are. But <laughs> let's let's step back there for a uh, second. So my background is I was born at Mart Memorial. Um, I've been through the school systems in Martin County. I've been here my whole life, and I've been a part of a family business since I was 16, basically. So my family, whether it's my mom, my brother, my uncles, we're all business-oriented, and um, majority of my cousins and stuff are small business owners as well. So I think bringing that experience, and we deal with a lot more than just preschool. We deal with sewer issues, air condition. We deal with construction. We deal with helping the community. Um, I was talking to TC Palm about that, about how we help the homeless. Um, we work with like Safe Space, Mary Shelter, Elevate Hope. So we do our part as a private business when we can either donate or I can help someone get a job. We work with Workforce Solutions. We have over I would say 35 employees between our small businesses in the city of Stewart, plus all the subcontractors and all the vendors we use. So we do contribute a lot to the city. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps when you have the resources and you basically know how to problem solve. And there hasn't been an issue that we've ran into as a family or myself personally that we haven't been able to fix. 
Um, so yeah, we do help, like I said, with the Mary Shelter Safe Space. We actually can get um, women that are in domestic partnerships potentially or homeless. Um, they have children, so we can help with getting them childcare, getting them a career. Um, we can get them scholarships as well, so they don't have to pay out of pocket to get an AS degree, bachelor's, master's degrees. So I think we do a big part in the community already. We could always do more, but I only have so many siblings to contribute. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Amy Pritchett, she's uh, one of our Martin County School Board members, and she said it's been really wonderful getting to know you. Your passion and energy is refreshing and welcome. You are correct. Research, research, research. Thank you, Amy. I, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, that's one of the biggest things. I think I do bring a high energy, especially when I get excited about something or if I'm on to something. I was actually researching um, the septic to sewer thing at like 4 a.m. this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I was on my it's computer. exciting reading at 4 a.m. <laughs> I was. I was going through clerk of court, and then I ran down to city hall and public works and stuff and utilities, and I, I confirmed my dates. I wanted to make sure that I was on the right path. That's um, part of it, making sure yes. that you're doing your research, that you're not just uh, espousing something yes. that's a, an assumption. I want to fact check myself. There you go. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, the county has a wonderful email system, and a big shout out to Martin County. It's one of the few I've seen that really is as transparent as anything I've seen, and that is an email system where emails sent to county commissioners and the county administrator are in a public portal. You just you can go there and read all those emails. Yes. City of Stewart does not have that. If you sit on the dais, would you advocate for that same type of system? So it's funny you bring that up. I actually made a post on my Facebook about this um, maybe a month or two ago. And what's astonishing for me is I don't like wasting staff's time at a city or a county level, especially if I can do my own research. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that we can go on Martin County's website, we can see all staff's emails, and I can search through it as well. So yes, at a city level, absolutely it should be there. We shouldn't be in the 1980s. I mean, we're in 2024, we're technology driven. Um, yes, it should be available. Um, and to top it off, we should also be able to search permits. That's one thing. We actually used to, in the city level, we used to be able to search permits, water bills, code enforcement violations, this used to be public. Hmm. I actually have the link still. It's just that the link is dead and it's no good. Interesting. Okay. Um, and they slowly started stripping it away. They took away the permits. They took away the water bill and the code enforcement violations. Because like I said, I, I, I don't want to waste staff's time. And, and I believe in transparency with our local municipalities. And um, we work for the people. And I think some people seem to forget that when you're elected. You have to be available, and it has to be open source. That's why the Internet exists. Everything's open and available. I like that. Myself, I appreciate transparency in government as well. And it, while it's all available through public records request, why make it more difficult unless you're trying to make it more difficult? It, yeah, and it, it shouldn't <laughs> be difficult. Like I said, transparency is huge. A lot of people think, because um, local government, there's pros and cons, right? And a lot of people just like to assume that, Every single staff member is bad, this and that, but they're human beings just like us. But yes, things should be available to the public. I, I believe so. There's a, a large expenditure that's recently been discussed, and you've brought it up with your social media post, and that's the maintenance building that needs a new roof at $126,000. But you had mentioned that the maintenance building is also going to be scheduled to be demolished in a couple of years. Yeah, I, I believe the city manager, they didn't have an exact date when he was talking about on the dais, but it could be two years, it could be three years. But yes, the city maintenance building, I guess, has roof leaks, and they sent it out for RFP. The bid came in, I think, at 126000 there and was, there was flaws in there. They were talking about replacing purlins and to meet uplift requirements for that building. Mm -hmm. And... For me, I had questions. How much linear foot of Perlin were they replacing? Because it doesn't say it in the proposal, by the way. And I ran the hmm. numbers and I talked to some local roofing contractors. The bid for the roof itself would have been around seventy-five to 78000 They were 126000 So I would imagine is the difference in the Perlins, is it for overages, unexpected cost? Typically it lays it out in the proposal. But when you look at the proposal, um, they had a line item for Perlins at, I think, 85 a linear foot. 
but it didn't say how much they were replacing to meet uplift requirements. And then my question was, well, what's it cost for a new structure completely? Metal buildings of that size are probably in that ballpark for a whole new metal structure. And to me, that might have made more sense. But then again, they're tearing a building down. Could we have spent 10 to 15, maybe 20,000 and coated the entire roof? To me, that would make more sense, especially if it was for my business. If I was going to tear down an accessory dwelling structure on my own property, I'm probably going to coat the roof knowing I'm going to tear it down because to me, there's no point spending the money. And I think that's where you have to look out for the constituents and where their tax base goes. Another issue that uh, I could talk about this at the county level as well is firefighters. How do you determine their pay, if their pay scale is fair? So it's a big issue. I wish they would fix it on a state issue and we wouldn't compete with local municipalities, whether it's the city, the county, Palm Beach County, Boynton. You're always going to compete. Currently right now, Palm Beach County, Palm Beach Fire Rescue, I think their starting pays 80000 and they're short on employees. Right. right. So you can easily go to Palm Beach County and make 30000 more than the city of Stewart or even Martin County potentially. Um, we also have a one ISO rating in the city of Stewart. So as far as I'm concerned, our fire rescue is amazing. To have a one ISO rating, that's the highest you can achieve. So do we have, are, are we not competing enough? Are we competing too much? Um, Tell folks provide. exactly what the ISO rating is. Yeah, so it's for your insur- it's basically for insurance purposes. That's how they rate you on, uh, I would imagine there's a whole bunch of criteria they have to meet, but it's a small, small factor. I believe Martin County, don't call me on this, I believe they're like a three or a four. Mm-hmm. I think a four. I heard that as well. I think they're a four. And they'll never achieve a one just because of unincorporated Martin County. But yes, their firefighters do make more in the county Um, than the city. We're always going to compete, um, but we also run less calls per person in the city versus the county. Um, So it's it's less volume, I would say, Um, but I believe we should still have the high level of service and we have a one ISO rating. So it seems like it's working. Gary, uh, earlier, I appreciate you tuning in. He says, this is for you, Sean. Great to meet you Monday night and hear your ideas. I only wish I could vote for you and lived in the city limits. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate it. Actually, at Monday's forum, I was told that a lot, Gary. Um, A lot of people are like, why are you running in the city? Why not the county? Um, I've had a bunch of interviews um, from nonprofits, from chambers, and they've mentioned the same thing. They're like, you're a sharp candidate that's walked through these doors. Why aren't you running at a county level? And well, the county seat wasn't up for, you know, to run in it, basically. And um, I didn't want to sit around any longer. I figured I can make a difference um, with my knowledge and my background. I feel as if I am a strong leader for the city. So uh, we're going to get ready to play that video number two in just a second. But I want to say back in uh, June 10th, the city manager, uh, Mr. Mike Martell, had a a really uh, fantastic presentation where he was covering whether or not the city of Stewart has really grown. And he's, he went back, I think it was to the 1950s, maybe even yeah. 1930s. But he kind of showed um, the county growing over the years in the city. And then the discussion came up with how many multifamily units have been approved since 2017. And um, Sean, you came up and said, my number's different from yours. Yeah. I think yeah, I've seen you had uh, 2,846 since 2017. Mr. Martell said there's 2,300 units that have been approved in the city of Stewart since 2014. Can you explain why, why there's a discrepancy here? I can. So I actually went back and uh, looked at my numbers once again, which resulted in a much higher number than even 2,800. So let's roll it back. So in my research, in the clerk of court, um, Martin County, I believe in 1997, I know for sure when the property was annexed, they had a moratorium on building. So you had large parcels on US-1 that were annexed into the city. Windermere, Best Buy, I believe that was like a 50 acre parcel Mm -hmm. or something that was annexed in, that was in 97. So they had units approved then, but since 2017, my number, is 3,175 since 2017. 
3,175 units. And that doesn't include but 10 single family homes. It doesn't include uh, single family homes on single lots. So the number is actually even higher if I was to go further. And I also didn't even go back to 2014. I started at 2017. And the discrepancy that comes into play is you have like Avalia and stuff like that that was approved back in you know early 2000 with some of it. I believe it was like 328 units that they had, but they never did it then, so they came in for amendments. And that's where the discrepancy lies. Do you use numbers prior to amendments or after? I fully believe you use the current numbers of 2017 and on, which I feel as if my number is very, very accurate of almost 3,200 units versus the 2,300 that was presented by the city manager. Okay. So it was just a, a disagreement of how he looked at the data versus how I looked at the data because we're both gonna come up with the same numbers. It comes down to the date frame of when we base it off of, I guess. So I did write a, a, write a letter to the editor for uh, friends and neighbors to clarify that as well, where I came up with it. So I'm working on my spreadsheet that I have, and I'm going to clearly lay it out for the constituents on what units were approved before 2017 on their original, which ones came in for an amendment, which ones haven't been developed, versus which ones that have been developed. So all the numbers are gonna be clearly laid out on a spreadsheet then. So however you wanna look at it and interpret the data is on you as an individual then. You can make up your own decision, I believe. I appreciate you clarifying that. I was confused myself, so that's very interesting. It reminds me of those studies. Uh, you can always have a study say whatever you want. It yes. depends what direction you, you pay Correct. to have it. It's one perspective, <laughs> I guess you could say, and, right. and we had a different right. perspective. Um, so. I want to play another video because this really is probably central to a lot of the races this year, county and citywide. It's just the growth in the mm -hmm. community. And you shared a clip with your opponent, Commissioner Troy McDonald. If you could play clip number two, please. It's actually, it's not, actually that. not that long. You know, and I don't see the city as changing as much as some people seem to think. I think the city is actually <clears throat> a thriving, beautiful, wonderful place to live. And... Um, yeah, I mean, we changed I our it. population density by like 30, 40 percent. Uh, Staying like, like I said, I've I've watched a lot of videos, but yes, that that video clip got my attention. I actually live in downtown. I live right off Colorado. We have businesses in the city. I I've put sixty thousand miles in the city alone in the last six years. I don't leave the city. I'm very familiar with it, and we see these elected officials it doesn't directly affect them. They live on the outskirts. I mean, I, I believe I'm the only one that's running that basically is downtown a lot. I walk downtown, I eat downtown, I patronize a lot. Um, and to say that you don't see it all changing that much, I'm on social media too. Engage with the public because they're not happy. And I think for anyone to say that you don't see the city as changing all that much, we've approved 3,100 plus units since 2017 alone. You can't drive safely in Martin County, let alone the city of Stewart. We don't have the infrastructure. Um, you look at the fatalities that we've had, the car accidents. I'd love to do a FOIA request on that. Mm. We've had multiple businesses close. Over over 400 businesses have closed as well in the city of Stewart. Wow. I did a FOIA request Since on when? It. Since uh, the last three years. Last so three years. Actually, well, let me roll it back. So there's actually 536 businesses that have closed for business licenses, there was 424 or so locations that have closed. So realistically, yes, there's 536 businesses, but 400 and some locations okay. that have closed. I don't know how many have opened because I didn't do that FOIA request yet, but to me that's astonishing. So do we want um, quantity or quality? To me, that's one of the biggest things. I would want quality. I want a business that comes in here, there's a need for it, and let's sustain it. If there's a need, do it. I mean, our business has been around for 36 years in Martin County. In the city of Stewart alone, we've been here for at least 30 years, 30 plus years mm -hmm. in the city alone. So I would say, yes, we are quality over quantity versus seeing just a high turnover. I think it's a stronger economy for the locals and the business owners to live and work in. 
I want to go back to Facebook here for a moment. Uh, Chuck Wynn, thank you for tuning in. He said, you should consider running for state house. Forget about the <laughs> county or the city. Um, also, uh, and Karen Hall responded, you can consider it after you serve the city first for four years. Chuck says, when was the land that Avonlea is on annexed? And I, he believes it was in the last, uh, we're within the past 10 years. Do you know? Uh, I want to say historically... I, I know it's more than one part. I do know that. And they've come back for amendments. I don't know the exact answer, though, when it was originally annexed. If I had to guess, I would say early 2000 when it was originally annexed, and they have come in for amendments um, several over the last 10 years. I would say probably three or four where they've had their little developments pop up and stuff. Okay. But I believe... The totality is 328 units that are tied to that project. They actually can't go over it, I believe. And this is information that I was told. I haven't fact-checked it personally. Um, I'd have to go through the clerk of court and look up resolutions, which I just I haven't had a chance. I've had so many things thrown at me. The last six months, I've had people from Port St. Lucie even reach out to me to research things, and I've been able to help St. Lucie County residents as well. Well, it sounds like you're a person that really is detail-oriented and you do research what you're uh, addressing, what you're saying, what what you're claiming. So, yes. you know, you just said you fact-check yourself. So it I sounds do. like you've done a lot of that here in the last few months. I, I know this is a completely different interview, honestly, from when the first time you came into yes. the studio. And uh, you're definitely very passionate about your yes. run here for office, and that comes through very clear. appreciate it. Um, there was a couple different... Uh, votes that that came to fruition one is voted yes the one was voted no so I'm, I'm gonna just let you yeah. weigh in on them the first one that is voted down the drug rehab center you touched on it earlier the yes. second one that was approved was the four-story Hilton Hotel all right so let's talk about the drug rehab center so as soon as I saw it pop up on the agenda I was like all right this is interesting it was an ALF they closed down um, started doing my, my research. I, uh, I'll be as detailed as I can on it. So this property was in Martin County up until 1997. It was annexed into the city of Stewart. Um, I don't have the exact dates. I want to say it was maybe 04, 05. It was actually approved, I think, for 64 multifamily units on maybe 10 acres, which is amazing. That's unheard of in right. this day and age. It is. Um, so that was done. We ran into the economy issues, right? So I think that project would have been built, would have been an amazing project. And I think that would have been a staple for the city moving forward if they had done 64 multifamily units on 10 acres. That would have set the standard 20 years ago for where we're at now. Um, I think in 2017, it came in for an amendment because it was never developed. That's when they came in for the ALF, Assisted Living Facility, for mm -hmm. 84 units. Okay. So that was approved, it was built, done. They closed down recently this fiscal year, I believe, and then you had an applicant that wanted to do a drug rehab center. So like I said, when it came on the agenda, I looked it up, I went right to land development code instantly for the city. I was like, wow, there's nothing laid out in our city of Stewart land development code for a drug rehab center. Hmm. It fell under commercial temporary lodging, which was the same as a hotel. Hmm. Two total different business models, and there's actually no limitation on beds. So you could have a facility and a site location in the city of Stewart and ask for 100 beds, 1,000 beds, 500 beds. There's literally no limit at all in our land development code. So this would have been the fifth largest drug rehab center in the state of Florida, by the way. Wow. Right here in Little Martin County, Florida. So then I went and did my research in Martin County, which this property used to be in. And Martin County limits you to 75 persons, and they also limit it to where you cannot be within another facility within one half mile. Hmm. And it's right down the street from Coastal Detox. Um, I don't know a whole lot about them. I know they've spoken stuff, and they were at 80% capacity. Okay. They weren't even at 100% okay. capacity, and this guy was asking for 140 beds, which is double almost of Martin County's. So if this property was in Martin County, the applicant wouldn't even be applying coming in front of the board. So that was astonishing to me. So I think things like that should be looked at as in our land development code and fix it. Mm -hmm. and, and this is not the first one in the city. So the problem has been there. I just wasn't involved then. Okay. If I was, we could have easily affixed our land development code and amended it. And uh, it would have been better for the community. 
Um, we wouldn't have had the sheriff come out and speak. So yes, I was actually the only one that pointed it out when it came up before the LPA. And uh, I did point it out and I actually gave the city manager, Mr. Mortel, a copy as well. And like I said, I understand the property's not in Martin County, but they set the standard and they did it right and we could learn from them. Has there been any discussion on the dais from anybody that said maybe we need to look at our land development regulations? No. Okay. No, I, I haven't heard anything, I, which is amazing, right? So once again, we know the issue exists. I clearly right. pointed it out as a resident in the city of Stewart. Fix it before and, uh, it happens yeah, again. It's clear. Martin County lays it out. It's actually uh, section 3.86B and 3.86D, I believe, in our uh, land development code, if anyone wants to look it up. And then the Hilton, the four-story Hilton that was approved. Yeah, so the, the true Hilton Hotel, um, it's, it's a tough one, right? So these projects, they're in the works for quite a while. So our commissioners and elected officials knew for the last year to two years that the applicant wanted to do this. Um, they came up with, it's funny, the form-based code got voted in before the hotel as well. Hmm. Um, as far as the site plan, um, it's a write-in, write-out only. Fruits and Roots is there. People left-hand turn into that, but you can't left-hand turn into the hotel. It's a write-in, write-out. So you're going to come through the roundabout, and I know people are going to try to left-hand turn in. It's just a given. Um, that intersection is already a nightmare coming off of US-1, where we go from two lanes to one, and people are just racing to cram in and merge. So traffic is already a nightmare. People are going to get hurt. I mean, my neighbor got ran over on Colorado, by the way, about a year and a half oh, ago. Wow. Two years ago, he got hit. Mm. And he lives in the Fraser Creek neighborhood. I also don't think the city of Stewart, I think we're better than a true Hilton Hotel right on Colorado, by the way. Um, to me, that's like putting a Burger King. Are our elected officials going to allow a Burger King or McDonald's right there on Osceola? Why not? It's a business, right? Do we want big corporations like that in our downtown? And I consider the entrance, which is Colorado, to our downtown, that's huge. It's the first four-story building on Colorado as well, by the way. Hmm. So, yes, they did it. Parking's off-site. They have one handicapped spot in front of it. To me, it just... 102 room hotel four story it should have been a boutique hotel in my opinion if there's an issue we already have another hotel at the old acock on us1 that was by right so we have two hotels on the same street they interconnect you're telling me there's not going to be a problem with that many hotels you want that many people walking we still drive cars in our city it's just how is this going to function is my question. And then we have commercial space there as well going in and retail. But where are you going to park at? Just a comment from Facebook. It would be uh, Karen Hall. It would be great for the residents if Mr. Reed and Commissioner McDonald have a public debate. Yeah, I um, we were supposed to have one on the Casey Ingram show. I believe uh, Commissioner McDonald declined it. Um, I'm, I'm fully open to it. I mean, I'd get a coffee with Commissioner McDonald. Um, I just, I look at the voting record of all constituents that are up there basically. And, uh, I would be all for it. I know Monday there was a forum debate. Um, I can't answer for him why he didn't show up. Um, the options are there. We did have one yesterday on TC Palm though. Um, but it wasn't open to the public. These were set questions by TC Palm. Um, and, and it's not the public being involved. They were very good questions, by the way, from TC Palm. And I feel as if I was able to answer the question straight to the point. They're not fluffed up based off my accomplishments because I'm not an elected official. So I don't have those accomplishments. Mine are just pointing out flaws in things and bringing awareness to situations so they can potentially fix it. Um, but I really, I would like a like one. Um, we can go back and forth. It's It's supposed to be healthy. I enjoy uncomfortable situations and uncomfortable topics as a human, by the way. It challenges me. It makes me a better person. And it also gives the community more insight into maybe my thought process and where I'm going. Um, I don't want to be prepared for anything. I don't want questions ahead of time. You just answer them on the spot, truthfully and the best of your ability. But yes, if we could make it happen, I would love to. We have about five weeks left. So we're running out of time. If anyone wants to reach out to both parties, I'm open. That's fantastic. And all all of the races, I have reached out to them. And again, only uh, Bruce Circus and uh, 
uh, and Bruce Circus, Bruce Nathan and Michael Circus came on with the candidate exchange. So there was yeah. one person in every race that wanted to, and one person in every race that didn't. So um, here's a question. It's a standing question. I ask all yeah. the candidates from a listener. What is the proper role, size, and scope of government? Um, Four minutes. So I, I believe in small government. Um, we provide a governing set of rules and regulations, and there are processes that should be followed. And yes, there are variances where you can deviate off of them, but they have to benefit the community, and we have to have some common sense when we make those decisions as an elected board. But yes, we should provide the basic necessities to the constituents that live in the city, and they should be able to come to us for help and support in the community if they have a question, a concern, but basics, um, we shouldn't be involved with businesses. Um, that's more of a county issue, though. Um, they're involved with way too much, and uh, they don't turn a profit. So it costs us money to have amenities, which is not fair to the constituents that we represent. Another huge issue, and we are, we're down to about three minutes, so yeah. I could have had you on here for two hours at least. Fast, huh? <laughs> exactly. We it goes by for, quickly. Wow. I know. I know. It. And we <laughs> wow. didn't get it all to all the issues, but yeah. I, I have to touch on it. Affordable housing. So affordable housing. We have Senate Bill 102. Yeah. <laughs> Live Local Act, folks. So we have Senate Bill 102. Um, developer can use it. I haven't seen it done yet, not in the city. I know in the county at the old 76 Golf World, I believe they're using it there. Yes. Um, but in the city, it's, it's free reign at this point to do it. Um, but it's also not our job to make a developer's project profitable for them. And what we've seen is is half units, which you can't raise a family in a 700, 800, 900 square foot, one bedroom apartment. I'm all for educating and inspiring the next generation. How do you raise your family in a one bedroom apartment? So I'd like to see more accessory dwelling structures um stuff like that that's that's what i did i stayed at home i moved in with my brother i was able to save money and do that and i know not everyone has that opportunity but yes if we saw more redevelopment for that with the accessory dwellings um right now in east stewart there is a program um through the cra that's going to come before the commission it's twenty five thousand a year and there's about 46 properties in east stewart that do not have clear title for development so i think that alone if we can get that clear title for the residents over there in East Stewart, you're gonna see much more affordable housing in East Stewart, and it's gonna be single family homes with an accessory structure instead of a bunch of multifamily units that don't meet the parking requirements. We've spent the hour with Sean Reed running for Group 4 City of Stewart Commission. That's against incumbent Troy McDonald. If you wanna find out more about Sean, readforstewart.com. And we have about a minute and a half left. Sean, why should folks vo vote for you? Well, I, I really think if you want a different direction and someone can see my message that I'm clearly trying to lay out to the constituents, I'm here for you. I'm here to make that change. And if you're happy with the way the city has been over the last 10 years, I would say, because there's people that have been up there for 10 plus years, they're career politicians. And if you believe in term limits, I'm your guy. I can send us in a totally different direction than what it's been for the last 10 years. So if you're happy, I would keep with who you're at. If you want a different direction, vote for Sean Reed then on August 20th. Folks, this interview and all the candidate interviews will be placed on my YouTube channel. Look up the Casey Ingram Show on YouTube so you can watch them anytime. It's really important to get an idea of what these candidates stand for and why they're running for office. Um, really appreciate you coming in here today. And we're going to have candidate interviews now through the primary. So everybody's going to be in here. And uh, Sean, thanks again. I wish you well on your campaign run. It's been very informative this hour. Thank you. I appreciate it. And yes, if anyone needs me, you can contact me. I've actually sat down and had lunch with a bunch of residents, and they were shocked that I was actually even willing to sit down with them. So I appreciate everyone. Thank you. Thank you much. I'll be on 9 to 11 now through the primary. Thanks to Mark Breckbill. Take care. We'll see you next week. You are listening to WSTU, Stewart, Jupiter, and Indiantown.